Hi, everybody. It's Diane here with another episode of Someone Gets Me. Today, we're going to talk about how to find joy and a real vitality in life. And I have an expert with us on this topic to share some amazing content with you about living the best, most full life you can. I have with us today, Matt Zinman, and he's coming to us from Pennsylvania. And I'm down here in Florida, so we have two different worldviews in the sense of our weather, but we're so aligned in the way we see the world. So you're going to be really excited to hear from him. He's an athlete and an entrepreneur. He has, is a single parent. He's written a book. He has done so many amazing, innovative things all around having a joyful and vital life. And I love the word vitality. So I'm so excited Matt's with us today. So welcome to the show, Matt. Thank you. It's great to be with you, Diane. I love the word vitality too. We already have something in common. Build on that. I know. It's like, it's perfect. It's like when, when um, I was talking to you on the phone the other day, I hung up and I was like smiling and I'm like, oh, I want to know him more. So I'm so glad I have the chance to dig in and get some questions answered and hear more about what makes you tick. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to figure that out myself. A little self-discovery here. That could be good. Hey, there we go. We, we I'm have ready. To go. <laughs> so the first thing I would like to ask you about is, have you ever, like you've done so many things, has there ever been a time where you found yourself stuck because you were overthinking or over planning or like not moving in the way you wanted to? And if so, how'd you get unstuck? Hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely was more of someone who was into analysis paralysis in my younger days. I always wanted to overprepare and, uh, and, and do the best job I can. And, and, and honestly, uh, at that point, I was reading a fair amount of uh, personal development books. And the one that really struck me that, that changed me in, in that way was the book Blink by Malcolm mm. Gladwell. Yeah. And he was talking about how, if you're not familiar with it, I, I imagine you are, those who are listening though, uh, that those who trust their gut make as good, if not better decisions than uh, those who, who overthink things. And so, you know, that, that got through to me. And I, I, was, I was at the point in my life there where I, I had built up some confidence and, and felt like, well, you know, I, I maybe should try that and prepare less. And uh, I've been preparing less ever since. It's been a huge time saver. Uh, you know, making that decision for sure. Oh, that is so cool. So what I'm really curious about is a little bit of your road, like how you got to this place of, of doing nonprofit work and internships and all these, it's such a varied thing and gift, gifted visionary people, we all have lots of variety. So can you give us a, just a little cliff note version of like the timeline of, of when did all this start and how did you get here? It's like really fascinating. Thank you. Yeah, Cliff, we're going to go top line here yeah. on, on, on Cliff Note. You already know me well enough, right? Let's go Cliff Note. So <laughs> I, I, I grew up in and around Philadelphia, as you know, and uh, started playing ice hockey uh, when I was uh, uh, six, six to seven. And that's kind of been a common thread for me, right? So I'll just lay that, lay that, one, that one track and then went to the local uh, Temple University if you're familiar with that, and graduated into marketing, communication, public relations. And I'd had four internships at the time. I had a foundation around that. I always loved going back and, and giving back to the uh, area universities and talking to the students and running the internship programs through my career, mainly working for agencies. And then around 2002, and I, I'd already at that point gotten to the point of going from uh, raise, rising through the ranks into management, which was a big switch, and I, I honestly didn't really like as much as do, doing the work I love. Um, I decided, uh, well, two things happened. One is I got a contract uh, as an anchor to go into business for myself to start my own company, and, uh, and I also got divorced. And so I also needed that flexibility to be working for myself, to be with my son, Jake, uh, who was two at the time. Uh, to, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm with him, I'm with him. And, uh, and then I'm mainly working the rest of the time. But after a few years of that, and, you know, I know that you talk about entrepreneurs and so forth. I mean, I was ahead of the curve. That was like a time when it was bricks and mortar versus, mm -hmm. you know, virtual. And I decided a few years later to get into the world of internships. It was, you know, what's going to align with my passion and experience and skills and what I saw as a market need. 
And so I, I started and developed some intellectual property there. And then in 07, had an opportunity to get some grants and shifted over into nonprofit. So uh, from a, you know, when people say, oh, the Internship Institute is the name of the organization, you know, who do you recruit? What schools do you work with? We actually work with the employers. We, we focus on oh. establishing the programs and setting up and improving the opportunities that, uh, that are available both so the companies keep doing them and, uh, and, and they're kind of like an annuity one year after the next. These, these internships stay in place and they grow. So uh, that brought me fast forward now 15 years, right? We'll go cliff no no, right? <laughs> and bring us to the present. And over that time, I've been wanting to, uh, wanting to write a book and have had the opportunity this past year to do it and decided to sit down and, and go for it. Now, a year later, uh, I'm uh, uh, focused on that. And, it, you know, as it happens with what's, you know, with COVID and, uh, you know, internships aren't exactly the, the star attraction right now going into the summer. So I'm able to focus on, on the book and I'm just pleased to be here with you talking about this. Oh, that's really cool. It's funny because your book is Zisms, And in my first book, I have seven out now, but my, in my first book, I have the, a whole chapter called Dianisms. And when I saw the title of your book, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's another similarity. <laughs> right. Now, when people think isms, they think like quips and quotes and things. Is that what you were, uh, is that the direction you went with yours? Well, it was a, the part of my book that kind of um, elaborated on all my one-liners through the book so that people would understand how I saw things. Got it. So it's kind of like a, a middle ground kind of thing. Not, not as developed as, as your book is, but I just think it's cute that we use the same type of naming. Yeah, I know. I'm actually thinking of turning this interview back on you. Maybe I should start asking you some of these questions. Oh, yeah, you're right. Go. Yeah, I know. But with, with, with Zisms, you, you know, that is the, the, the initial perception of it is it's going to be like one-liners and, and, and quips, but um, yeah, it's full-fledged. So that, that, that was my cliff notes. I really did my best to stay top line. Okay. That was great. And, and the thing that I really loved as I'm listening to you is I see the path of, of a visionary who's ahead of their time, which is who our audience is, right? And, and all the people I work with are visionaries. And so how did you teach yourself or how did you learn how to pace yourself in a way that worked for you? Because when you're so far ahead of the curve, sometimes there's a, that frustration of, uh, I can see it, why can't the world see it or that kind of thing. And how have you learned how to moderate or kind of navigate that water without stressing yourself out to the point of no return? Right. Well, that's a, that's a, a very complex <laughs> question you've asked. So I'll, I'll rewind and I'll go back to, you know, when I first went into business uh, with the marketing agency, which was Z Communication at the time, if you can't tell, I do have, you know, a thing for that 26 letter. And I, I don't think I was really looking to be an entrepreneur until very close to that time. It was when I hit that management spot where I was like, I really, you know, where do I go from here? And, uh, and then my, my life intertwined as I, as I described with my son. Uh, but back then it, it really was, you know, bricks and mortar versus virtual. And I was fortunate to have that contract. Um, I was able to bring on, you know, different clients uh, and, and, and get some, you know, some foundation for the, for the company. But when it came to competing against the bigger firms, the more established firms, I had to hire teams. Um, and, you know, managing that stress with, with a certain balance of, of, of confidence of the things that you know you're doing right and money coming in with, wow, I'm taking a risk here. Um, I have to invest in, in, in looking like I'm as big as, as any of these other uh, uh, competitors. And, you know, there were some trade-offs there. I wouldn't trade the freedom for the world, number one. And that was at the point in time when you could just start doing that from a work standpoint. Um, but uh, when I went into a major bid, I, we, we got all the way into the finals and like, you know, we've got this going, I've got a team hired and we lost. And, mm -hmm. and, and of course, you're not going to win them all. But this, this one really hurt. It was, it was a real punch in the gut. And I you know, had a debrief with the, with the hiring. Uh, it was a marketing director at the time. And they said, you know, we really thought you guys were the best. But we couldn't hire you because we needed to look out for our tails. Right? We had to hire a more established firm and not put ourselves at risk to hire this, you know, what's that? You know, some virtual agency at the time. Right? So I was like, wow, you know, this... Um, 
it was an eye opener. And, you know, that's, that's what really got me into the internship space. Now that too was a complete frontier and even to this day remains a frontier. <laughs> um, and it, it is one of those things where you do feel like you're swimming upstream, uh, you know, or, or, you know, pushing that boulder up the hill, you need to pick your, uh, pick your metaphor, but you take the wins, you know, the way, you, you know, as you get yeah. them, you're going to take the losses, but you take the win. So as sometimes it's very challenging. I always yeah. tell everybody, if I'm journaling about it today, it shows up in the world about two years later. And so I've had to learn the hard way that, okay, this is a really great vision or a great insight and take a long deep breath or 10, because it's going to take a while for people to even begin to be able to see it. It's speeding up a little now, but there were times in my life where that's why I asked that question of visionaries like you, like, how did you do that? Because I think I just kept struggling until I finally surrendered and it said, okay, fine. It's a two year wait. So just, I mean, <laughs> it, it, I mean, look, there's, there's no way around it. I mean, there's, there's kicking and clawing and scratching and you call it what you will, but you recognize the trade-offs. I mean, for me, from just a value standpoint, it was the freedom, Yep. you know, and being with my son and, and you know, that, that being my life priority. Um, I am remarried now, um, just, uh, just a few years ago, but you know, he's 19. So for the bulk of those years, you know, that was really what shaped my world and, and, um, you know, driving the, uh, the businesses we've talked about the nonprofit, uh, uh, certainly was a priority too, but you know, come second. So you're all about having great experiences and making a great life and creating great things. And that is joy in and of itself. Cause I always say that joy is our natural state and from that joy comes our vitality. And you also are an athlete. So you understand the physical vitality as well. It's not just all in your head, you know? Right. So what are some things like I, a lot of people who listen to the show around the world have emailed me many questions about overthinking or being stuck in their head and like wanting to like, be able to like, viscerally feel their vitality better or, or have those things come together. Do you have any advice for those people or any, maybe a tip that you could share with them on how to more connect that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, if it's okay, this does actually take us to the front part of the book um, around yes. the concept of, <laughs> of earned confidence. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what you're describing really begins with staying present and yes. not right. And so that really is a, you have to look to what's going to ground you. And where we talk about as a foundation is this notion that we've, we've obviously all been through everything we've been through in our lives, younger, you know, wherever we are in our life, you know, we've, we've been all been through the ringer, right? Whatever that is, you know, in terms of context, um, we've had to make it through a lot and, you know, we're still here, we're still standing. And so overthinking things and getting caught up, especially worrying where you're getting into that negativity or being anxious or stressed about things. And especially when you're talking about worry, it's an expectation around things that you don't want to happen. That's where you really start getting away from that groundedness that you need to uh, achieve in what you just described. So earned confidence is really that, that grounding tool is just a constant reminder. You know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm still here and I, I can handle everything that comes my way as if I have a choice. I'm going to do that. I'm a survivor. I may not have all the answers for everything of the challenges I'm, I'm, I'm faced with right now, staying present, but I know that I'll find them and I'll make it through. And, and no matter what, there's, there's, there is, in a lot of cases, just no other way but through, right? And just trying to be right. step back and be objective about it and, and just deal with the real. We all have plenty of things going on right now than to get caught up in overthinking. So um, that was my short answer. Yeah, that's great. And I like, I like that phrase you just said, deal with the real. Because I see that when people are overthinking a lot or when I start overthinking, it's not, it's not even reality. It's just stuff. <laughs> it's not even like right. what we're, it's not even the thing, whatever it is, you know. And so I'm like, gosh, you know. And I knew you would have a great answer for that. And I knew it would segue into your book. So let's talk about your book. I, the, what I've seen of it so far is really great. And I'm enjoying talking to you about it because it's nice to really interact with somebody who gets these things on a level that's more, has a wider spectrum to it. So right. share with everybody about your book, how it sure. came to being maybe, or things that you think that they would really enjoy about it. Yeah, thank you. So I'll back up to the second part of the question about 
um, the decision to, to write it. And it's something that, you know, I, I think a lot of people talk about writing a book and, and it, it's, it's there or it's, or it's not there or it's time has come or, or it's not quite come yet. Right, right? right. So it's been marinating for me for probably about 15 years. Mm. And uh, there, there have been concepts like earned confidence. I, I've, I've, I've had that grounding me for at least 10 of the last number of years. And, and it's been a great, um, a great help to me through, uh, you know, through quite a bit I've had to, to, to overcome. Um, but I don't know that I was really quite ready to write it until more recently. And I, I also felt like a personal responsibility for, in combination of some of these things I've learned through, through life. And, you know, we'll, uh, we'll talk about it in, in the coming time here. And then, you know, and for example, working with the, with the Institute, and I, I do work with a lot of college students and I've had hundreds of interns myself over the years. They're not really ready. I mean, right. No substitute for experience. That's really at the, at the heart of, of that endeavor. And the book is somewhat representative, at least in, in, in some of the early parts of what I wish my younger self knew. Yes. So, so that was a driver. And, and then it, it also certainly elevates, you know, one chapter building onto the next in terms of being actionable and, and trying to find your why and, and that purpose and posing questions that either resonate and, you know, some people are going to resonate with and, and other people not. But one of, one of the questions which resonated, you know, back, uh, I asked myself, um, <laughs> was what would I regret not doing? Ooh, and, that's a good one. and, and the book really just, I mean, that was, that just brought it right into focus and then having the opportunity this past year to be able to put my head down and, and, and do it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you have to, you have to go down that grind. So I actually sat down, I wrote for about two days. I got earned confidence. I got this be aware of spiders, all these different things that, that I, I have been thinking about for years. And I'm like, I did it. I'm done. You know, like all this writing I have, and I'm like, Oh no. I'm nowhere close. And, uh, and yet you, I put myself in the position where I'd almost like come too far to, to, like, to stop. Right. So I can't really claim to say, oh, I'm going to write this book. It was like, <laughs> I'm going to get these things down. So that was kind of how it, how it happened. And then um, to answer that, that, that part of the question with the book and just an, a quick overview, you know, certainly we're talking about self-discovery and mindsets mm-hmm. and things that are, are all around personal development, but not just internally, also externally, personal relationships, um, interactions, handling situations, um, you know, th- those kinds of contingencies. How do you handle things? Emotional intelligence, you know, is kind of folded into it. But then it, it elevates into mindfulness and awareness and energy and um, certainly the, the areas of health around mental health and physical health are part of it. And, uh, and, and then we go into, you know, that swimming with the current and, and having – having some fun with making uh, coincidences matter. And I don't know, you have a thing for 1111. That's chapter 11, right? That's kind of one of my things. But then we get into law of attraction, which I think is another kind of an education chapter. Um, But then we get into the stuff we were just talking about, Mm -hmm. which is the why and the taking action. And law of attraction only gets you so far. Yes, You know, it's a book doesn't write itself. If, right. Right. If you have, if you have, a, if you have another why, or you're an entrepreneur, or you're starting a company, right? That's effortful. So, how do you then combine that kind of business sense, um, entrepreneurial um, savvy, I guess, with the law of attraction and some of these principles right. to help you stay on course and, and achieve that goal? So, we talk about that, and then, and then it curves out with. Um, um, winning the battle within and, and, and formulating this nine, at least as a foundation, a framework around a life enrichment action plan. Um, and, and then uh, I, I guess the last thing is the book has no ending in a way because there's a, a reader forum that I want people to come and, and, uh, and join and share, you know, their Z-isms, right? That, um, that notion that we all have pearls of wisdom and experiences and things that when we share them, we, you know, we might not have a book in us, but we certainly have those kinds of things that, yes. you know, if we share, we know could possibly impact a lot of people as many as possible. And that's my why. So um, I, I want to open up that forum to, uh, you know, continue to grow myself. That I love the idea of the forum. And I'm sitting here, and I'm going, well, I really believe that people need to share their wisdom, like we need to speak it into the world and, and stop being the best kept secret. And so thus I have three podcasts. This is only one of them. And, and, and because it, without following that why and letting that creative part of me show up, 
then it kind of blocks my system. You know, I don't feel as healthy or joyful or alive and my vitality just starts getting sucked out. But once I get to be creative, it's like the fountain turns back on again. Right. And, and you and, know what feeds you. Right. That's the point, right? You, you right. know how to give yourself a steady diet. And that is, the, that is like an exercise. That's right. Yes. And now you form these habits that, that feed mm -hmm. your soul. And I, I think everybody wants that, but certainly that, you know, if you're not there yet, it, it, it's something that, you have to invest your, in yourself to to form those habits, right? Right. I think the word invest is the right word. It takes an investment. And I I, I don't know, I, probably people that you've run into too think that they just can jump there. Like they see where you've come and what you've gone through and what you've done or they see my career and they go, well, I want to be like that. And, I, and they, But they want to jump there without doing any of the work or understanding it's a road. It's a process for all of us. We're all always growing and moving, which is why I like that idea of the forum at the end. Like, okay, you've read all this. Now, what are cool things that you have to say, you know, right. to the reader? And I mean, that, uh, that's what I'm finding in the podcast. That's how I met you. That's how I met other cool yeah, people. I've met so many up, people. It opens it up. I mean, you know, I'm a work in progress, just the same. I am right. so, you know, I'm a young man. I get, you know, I got, I got lots to go. So, um, you know, just kind of seeking that out is, <laughs> is really, uh, you know, is really a, a driver. That it's really fun. So, um, I'm going to shift gears a minute and we'll come back to the book in a second, but I'm yeah, really curious. Sure. I'm really curious about what are things that you do to help keep yourself grounded and aligned hmm. personally? Well, well, I'd say my immediate answer is trying to, you know, embed gratitude in, you know, throughout my day. Um, and, and that's somewhat of a habit too. And, and, you know, we all talk about gratitude. I, I think that, um, you know, people get it. There's a science behind it, um, whether you attribute it to law of attraction or just the individual experience of experiencing life in the moment and what brings us joy, and, you know, to the theme of, the, of our conversation here. So the other thing is that life really moves, you know, so fast on any given day. You know, the tail wags the dog. Uh, you plan half your day, but you don't know what's going to come the other half. And it's easy to get away from these things. So I really try to um, fold gratitude into my daily routines so that, or I have these triggers. So it, it starts from when I, I put my feet on the floor in the morning, when, as soon as I get out of bed and I, I, I feel my, you know, the gravity, uh, you know, underfoot, um, I, um, I, I, I pay attention to it and I pay attention to, you know, some of the things that I, I start you know, when you wake up, you're disoriented. Like, well, where am I? But you know, that's exactly what I do right away. It's like I ground myself, and um, I'm a heavy sleeper and a heavy dreamer. So it's, you know, I really always have to reset. And um, and and so it starts there. And you know, for anybody, whatever your routines are, I encourage you to 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 find those triggers so that it's embedded in your life. Another would be like synchronicity. So 1111, that would be, you know, I have a gratitude exercise. I literally would just stop and do not knowing if there's a second left or not at 59 when I, when I, when I catch it on the clock, but there are days when I'm feeling really in the flow and well, there's, there's 111 and 222 and 333. And I, and those are the kinds of things that when I, um, I, I, I trigger off the, the opportunity to just just take a moment and uh, and really make sure I'm I st I'm grounded and I'm thinking of something I'm you know I can feel good about. Yeah, that's perfect. I notice the synchronicities all the time. Right, they like follow me around, and sometimes I'll say them out loud, and I'll be with somebody who doesn't really think that way, <laughs> and they go, "What are you thinking about?" I'm like, "No, look at this number's been following me all day, or right. whatever it is." And I'm like, "No, there's there's something in there. There's an energy in there that's that's palpable to me." Well, they, I mean, they go hand in hand. You know, the more I, I ground myself and am and, and, and present and am experiencing gratitude, and I'm not saying it's easy, right? It's practice just the same, you yeah. know, as anything that you have to do, um, you know, consciously, mindfully. The more I'm in the flow, the more I really catch those things from happening, the more I experience coincidences. The yes. more those coincidences are... Um, more meaningful or astronomical, yes. uh, you know, those are, so, I mean, look, that's an, all of this is in part a very individual experience, but the idea is to fold it into your life because, you know, that's where the joy happens. Yes. The, I like the embedding and folding it into your life rather than making it just a cool concept or idea that it's really an internal and, and external. It's everything kind of, all, I call it making soup, you know, just all together. So what's I'm, the most I like soup? 
soup. I, I love, love soup. soup. Yeah. I like to make soup. So what's the most memorable food you've ever eaten? I'm a chocoholic. Like, you say food, I say chocolate. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. So what's the most memorable chocolate you've ever eaten? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, probably when I, you know, again, I'm just going to go to first thought. That's what I want. First I thought. thought. Okay. <laughs> when I was in San Francisco in the Ger- Gerdaldi, I can't hard to Gerdaldi, pronounce. Gerdaldi, right? Thank you. I, pron- I appreciate that. And just going through that whole factory and sampling everything, I was like, you know, where's Charlie? Uh, I, was, I was just really in, uh, in my zone. I, that was my happy place right there. Oh, that, that, that <laughs> Gerdaldi's factory in San Francisco is a happy place. It's like, right. oh, I love it here. I love it here. That's a great yeah. question. You know, like, I'm like, what is she going to ask next? Like, anything could happen. I like it. Fire yeah, it, away. It's true. Anything can happen because I just follow my intuition and go, okay, what neat thing are we going to talk about next? You know, and, and it's always fun, you know? Definitely. So if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? Oof. I'm going to go oak. Oak tree. Okay. And how come you would be an oak tree? I just think strong. I think steady and grounded. So, you know, we talk about, um, I think of like the, uh, the, there's a a model that stuck with me from an experience I had in, in, uh, when I went to a place called Esalen in Big Sur, Uh California, you weren't expecting a whole story to come off the tree question, I imagine, but uh, I'm going to keep going here for just a moment. I, I and, had a feeling a story would come. Yeah, oh, I, I, I want to I hear the story. I didn't realize there was one, but <laughs> I'm just going to go with the flow, like you said. And uh, and so this was about the elements and and our personalities and um, and how the earth, fire, air, and water relate to who we are and circumstances mm-hmm. and and how they apply. And so, you know, we have our innate. Um, personas and characteristics. So if you're type A, you might maybe more fiery. But over time, I've really tried to be grounded that, you know, be earth Mm -hmm. and be, you know, be more tree-like. So in a circumstance, for example, I really try not to be, um, you know, push, pushy. I don't want to push forward, um, but I'm not going to be pushed. So when I think of that, I think about being deeply rooted and, and, um, the strength of an oak tree is, is, uh, is why that comes to mind. I love it. That's great. It's perfect because oak trees are very strong and grounded. I love hugging old oaks. Do you ever hug trees? No, I'm not a tree hugger. Just try hugging a tree. It's funny because you asked me trees and I'm thinking like, I, I can't claim to be a tree expert. So, so, so I could, anything could have come out of my mouth there. I don't know. So, so oak, but, uh, it's the only tree I know. That's why I answered no. Well, oak trees are really amazing because of their groundedness and they actually have, you know, trees have their own heartbeat. Hmm. And so you can go and lean up back up against a tree and like breathe or you can hug it and you actually can feel the wisdom of that tree. Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to go on a real tangent here uh, for just a moment, okay? And it's a little, it's a little morbid, but I, I, it's, stick with me, is that I saw this thing where... Um, in terms of, you know, we're all going to face the ultimate, our, our demise, mm-hmm. where you can um, basically be put in this bulb that um, becomes part of a tree. Yes, I've seen that. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, if you're going to make a choice, if there's anywhere I'd rather be, that's not a bad idea. Right. I like that. Yeah. So that's, I- that's, that's actually very true. I've actually, you know, that's kind of what I've said to my wife. I've seen that and I've seen where people get cremated and then they go in these little pods and they take them out and create coral reefs. Right. It's, it's, I, I, I want it to be meaningful. Right. Like even when, even beyond, you know, like I want it to be meaningful. If I can be the uh, nutrient for, a, you know, a heart beating tree, that's awesome. That's, right. You know, where, where's the best place I can be? So, um, you know, we don't want to go out of our way to think of these things too much, but try and frame it into the positive. Well, you know, there's seasons to everything and, you know, and the universe is always expanding. So if we don't make friends with all of it, then, and we let that little fear, that little, oh, I'm not going to talk about that happen. Then that stops our vitality because it's, it's yes to all of it. Right. Right. And I know I think that's one of the things that's neat about your book is it starts out at a kind of simple level and it gets very, very mindful and, and much more expanded. And 
And that's kind of the road I think people take from, huh, there's a, such a thing as personal development. I was talking to somebody yesterday who didn't even know there was anything like personal development or personal change until they were hmm. in their late 30s. Huh. Wow. And a very educated, very successful person, but didn't even know there was, it was a thing. Right. I mean, it's easy to live life with blinders, especially. Right. And she was like, I went through a phase of being upset that, you know, nobody introduced it to her. Like her parents never told her, nobody told her whatever. And I said, well, we find it right on time. You know, it's okay. It might feel late, but it's not. And it's embracing all of it. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy about how your book is, is it's Thank not you. just one, it's not one avenue and it's expansive and it invites people to continue to expand because there's no finish line. So it's perfect. Right. And I like what you just said. I mean, I do have that, that thought of, you know, no matter how, no matter where you've been and how, what direction you've gone up until now, you, you, you can always turn. Yes. Right. Right. So that's a great example. Yeah. It's like, I always say we're right on time. Even if our brain might tell us differently, but we're really right on time. Just because our brain says it doesn't make it true. In fact, half the time it's not true. You know, that's how brains. If only we knew which half. Right. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. So if there was somebody listening to you right now today and they're, they're going, man, I really like that guy and really like what he's saying and all of those things. And, but they're kind of scared to get started because a lot of visionaries, you know, they're kind of stuck or they're overthinking or they're procrastinating often, or they're just trying to get some kind of hope and motivation from this show. What are some things you would share with somebody who's on that? Like, I want to jump, but I'm really not sure. Hmm. Obviously get your book because that will help walk him through some of it. But what are some actionable items that you would suggest to that person who's just flirting with it maybe to help invite them into this whole expansive world? I mean, my immediate thought there is it all starts from within, right? You know, start by, you know, if you're, if you're kind to yourself, Mm -hmm. right, which somehow many of us are not, right? I'd say start there. Because if you have that as a foundation, then what you're describing is, is going to be in natural. It's going to be effortless. Part of being kind to yourself right. is, is feeding, your, you know, feeding your soul. And I think that that, that in itself is a, is a mindset um, mm-hmm. shift. And, and yeah, I mean, sure, I'd, I'd, I'd love if they you know, read the first part of my book and decided they want to keep reading. But whatever it is, to your point, they might be open to and start thinking, well, what is, what is that for me? If in being kind to myself and I'm looking to grow, um, maybe it's, maybe it's having a coach, maybe it's, uh, it's consuming videos or, uh, or, or attending a conference or, you know, whatever, read, you know, read another book. There's a lot of great books out there. Um, you know, find that, but it all, it really does all start with, you know, you won't have, you won't have that hesitation if you're already in, 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 in the mindset of, of, you know, I'm, I've been beating myself up or I'm really always worried about things, you know, don't do that. Those are, those are learned behaviors. Babies, babies aren't born warriors. Right. You have to, you have to untrain yourself. So I, I, I always just come back to, you know, why be anything other than kind to yourself? And then the rest yeah. is going to build. It's perfect. That, that is such an actionable tip. That is so valid. There's so many people who beat themselves up unmercifully or they're kind to themselves for the five minutes or doing their affirmations in the morning or their journaling. And then the rest of the day they go south. So it's really right. practicing, like you said earlier, embedding being kind to yourself throughout the day. And if you catch yourself wandering away, come back to being kind to yourself and, and getting it. That's so it's part of the fiber of our being. You know, a lot of it also has to do with making assumptions which I think is often overlooked. <laughs> you know, it's like that opposite part of worry. And, you know, you could be in a, you know, self-esteem is, it could be, you know, it can be hard for just a lot of people. And so you're, you're, you're allowing yourself to be so susceptible and ending up beating yourself up for completely no reason, just because you made an assumption. So, you know, it could be a, a coworker, it could be somebody else. And, and you are in a conversation, you're like, why did I say that? Or, you know, or they think this of me or they think that right. of me when in fact they thought it was a wonderful conversation, but you're over here, you know, with your own internal perceptions and you really need to challenge that. And, mm-hmm. and that's really where, you know, being just rooted in staying present and being kind to yourself will just make all that go away. You will stop making assumptions. You'll stop worrying 
and you'll be able just to kind of create that uh, positive, positive cocoon. I don't know. I don't, you know, these are words that are falling out of my mouth. You keep it so spontaneous. <laughs> I just don't know where to go with these questions you're asking me. So, um, Oh, but that's the fun of it all because it is fun when we're living in joy and we're vital in our life and our life force is flowing, spontaneity and creativity and laughter are the result. That's how you can tell, you know, otherwise we could sit here. I could go, well, Matt, tell me about your book. Like, really? <laughs> yeah, that is a little boring. You're right. Not like is it boring, but I, it would cheapen the whole reason why somebody would actually want to buy your book or follow you on social media or get to know what you're about because you're not this like, you know, two dimensional flatline guy, you know, there's way more depth and meaning and vision and growth and expansion happening. Right. I'm and actually hard to find on social media right now. That's like my growth area uh, that, you know, like I'm in my early fifties now. I feel like I missed the cut and I type my papers in college, you know, I'm okay on like LinkedIn is, is, is something that's comfortable for me, but everything else, I'm really just trying to get going, get up to speed and, you're just getting on video and posting videos of the subtitling, you know, the technical stuff around that. You know, these are the things I'm trying to grow at right now. And, uh, you know, you talk about the comfort zone or, or, or expanding right. it, right? Your discomfort zone, you know, where you grow mm -hmm. and, and pushing yourself out, you know, right? That's if you stay in your, if you stay in that cocoon, right? You're, you can't right. grow. Right. So, you know, that's probably the area where, where I'm trying to grow right now and expand my comfort zone where, Hopefully to the point it'll be more, you know, second nature and I will be a lot easier to find and, uh, and be able, you know, put, put lots of content. I don't have any shortage of content. I just have this bottleneck that I'm working toward opening. So, um, you know, since you mentioned it, that's, that's really where, where I go to what I'm working on, on myself. Well, if you're really interested in hearing what Matt has to say or more about him or how to find him, um, we found each other on LinkedIn and you will also be able to find how to reach him on LinkedIn and his website and everything in the show notes for the show. So if you're enjoying our conversation, then find him and let him know you heard him here so that he realizes that his great vibration and joy is going out and out and out. How fun is that, right? I like it. So. I like it. Um, I have one more question, but before I um, ask that question, is there anything that you wanted to say that I didn't mention or talk about or bring up that's on your heart that you're like, you know, I really want the listeners to hear this? You know, my, I, I've known my why for a long time, you know, one way, shape or form, it's to make a difference. It's to make a positive impact. That led me into, you know, a number of things and particularly the Institute I'm really loving this. Um, the The institute, as much as I can show for some of that impact, was is all upstream, and to have the opportunity to be here and you know share this with your listeners and know that you know, someone on the other side of this microphone is going to be hearing this, um, that I'm just so grateful to have the opportunity and to to make a difference, however much I I can, and I, I want to thank your listeners. And um, I also, since you said that we're international, I should also pay heed that the Z is a Z in other countries. And most other countries will say Z-isms, but I'm sorry, I'm going to be selfish. It's actually Z-isms. And, uh, but I want to be respectful. Yes. And, um, and, and I just want to say thank you to you and, and I appreciate the opportunity. You're, you're just a, a sheer joy and pleasure. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. I'm the whole show, Someone Gets Me, is all about being understood and heard and gotten and feeling hope moving forward. And I think it's so important at this time with all the craziness going on in the world and the shedding of that old darkness, you know, how do we bring more light? And certainly you're one of the people bringing the light. So my final question is, if you were going to have a billboard that the whole world could see, what would you put on it? Hmm. You had to save the hard one for last, huh? You know, I'm going to... I'm going to go with uh, there's no substitute for experience. Beautiful. There's no it's, substitute for experience. Yeah. You know, it's been under, it's like what's under your email all these years. And it started way, way back when I did all the internship stuff, but it, mm -hmm. I found it to be so universal. It's not just about that. It's, it's about putting yourself out there. It's about being in the moment and experiences where joy happens. So right, right, in, the, right in the theme of your show. 
Oh, that's perfect. That's wonderful. Well, I got lucky on that answer, I'm just going to say. Yeah, you did great. So <laughs> I, I love that answer. So is the, um, now see, now I'm tongue tied. Oh, is there anything else that you would like anybody to know that we didn't cover, even with that crazy question? Just be kind to yourself. All right. So everybody, thank you, Matt, for being on the show with us today. Thank, thank you for you. writing a powerful book and bringing people together to help transform the world. It's a mighty work you're doing that has ripple effect you haven't even seen yet. And thank you for doing that. It takes guts and courage and tenacity and focus and thank a kind you. heart, of course. So thank you for doing all the work that you're doing. And everybody. And you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me, Diane. I really oh. appreciate it. Thank you so much. So remember, everybody, you're a rock star and you're here on purpose with a purpose. So go out there and take your vision and do something with it that shines light in the world. And until the next episode of Someone Gets Me, be well.